This video was sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. So over on the Bandai Spirits Twitter, they posted a link to this awesome little article which is part of the Gundam Build Real YouTube series and it's called How to Gundam Build Real. Part 1 was how to make your real grade Oryx 78 2 look like the one in the series. It's basically a bunch of simple detailing up techniques as well as a little bit of airbrushing. But the one I'm going to be looking at today is even simpler and that's Gunpla Mixing. How to make the Unicorn Gundam that appeared in Episode 1 of Gundam Build Real. This one right here. It's a pretty cool concept. It's a mix between the Unicorn Gundam and the Banshee. And the coolest thing about it is, they're not releasing a kit of this particular Gundam. You can just build it from existing kits. Of course, that does mean you need to buy two kits in which to make it, but you do end up with two different variants of mixed unicorns. The one I'm going to be taking a look at today is the one from the show, and I will mention that I do not have brand new kits in which to do this, so I'm doing it with some older kits, so we'll see how that works out. Also, I will mention that if you do have a pair of kits you've built before, which is the Unicorn Gundam and the Banshee, you cannot make this kit exactly if you've thrown out the runners, because this particular Unicorn Gundam, once again the one from Gundam Build Real, does require some of the leftover parts of the normal Gundam that are in the Banshee colors. I also do not have these right now, but I will mention when you would use these in this particular build. Honestly, I think this is an awesome concept. I hope we're going to see some more things like this in Gundam Build Real in future. But for now, let's get right into it and check out the Gundam Build Real, Real Grade Unicorn Gundam. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today we're taking a look at this right here. What? Oh yeah. <laughs> it was me all along. I'm Spooky the Neck Gremlin and I'm taking time out from my hobbies of data theft, tracing, surveillance, and commercial targeting to steal Mechagaikotsu's identity. Because he don't use security software, he ended up getting his login credentials stolen by me. Spooky, now his Gundams are mine, his figures are mine, it's all mine. Hey, I might just rearrange this so that the big one here is in the front just to annoy him. <laughs> but oh no, that was just a dream because he's got a subscription to Surfshark VPN. With amazing features such as Kane Web and the ability to mask his location, which means he's immune to my gremlin hacking ways. Damn it. Well, in that case, I might as well just give up. Kick back and watch the new live action Gundam. YouTube series called Gundam Build Real. But damn it, it's a Japan only show and I can't watch it outside of Japan. If only I had Surfshark VPN, I could switch my location to Japan and watch live action Gundams clash in fierce giant robotic jewels. If only I got Surfshark VPN through that link in the description using the code MECHA to get 83% off and three extra months free. Alright, so straight away I'm going to mention I do not have a standard Banshee Norn, I just have the Final Battle version which is the P Bandai variant. But that will not matter for this because we're just using the outer armor. This particular version of Banshee is just rocking a different color Psycho Frame inside. So it's got the green instead of the orange, but we're not using the Psycho Frame of this particular mobile suit. We're using the Psycho Frame of the full armor unicorn back here. Now let's get them somewhat stripped down. So the whole concept here is to take multiple armor parts off of the Banshee and attach them onto the Unicorn. So the Unicorn is the base. The first step it does mention on that particular guide is to pop the front skirting armor flaps off like so. I find when doing this it's best to actually take the whole part off so you can get a good grip on what you're doing here. Also I find pushing the flap from behind is better than pulling at it. Once again if you do not have these kits built it's even better so you're better off buying both kits for this build as opposed to trying to deconstruct kits you currently have. Once you've got those parts separated, just take the opening closing flap you got from the Banshee, attach it onto the parts of the Unicorn, then pop it back on just like this. If you already have both of your kits built like I do right here, I do recommend at this point to disassemble them entirely. I know in the tutorial on the Bandai website it does show them doing it while they're still attached, but it will save you a whole lot of headaches, hassle and potential breakages by taking this mixing build part by part by part. So there's actually a very simple trick to this which essentially bypasses this entire tutorial and that is 
All the parts that you attach on from the Banshee are all the light grey segments. So if you get in extremely close to the Unicorn Gundam, you'll notice that the white sections are split into two different colors, which is a absolutely pure white and a light grey. You're going to remove all the light grey parts and replace those with Banshee segments. If you find that a little bit vague, well, we're going to go through every piece one by one now. When it comes to the foot section, removing a lot of those light grey segments is quite easy, except for the one. Those large plates on either side of the foot are actually connected deep inside of the foot, so you have to remove pretty much all of the top layer of armor. Take off the front toe section, then the upper white section, and then you should be able to get to it without too much disassembly. Then pop in that section that we took off of the Banshee, and then rebuild it with the standard white front. We're going to use the Banshee's rear segment just above the heel, stick back on the standard unicorn's toe, and then the Banshee's upper side armor, and you should end up with something that looks a little something like this. So next up onto the leg, as for the parts that you're going to want to remove, that would be this little piece of armor at the front of the leg, the two large segments of armor either side of the calf section, be careful not to take the little section from inside of that, you need to leave that on there. Next up, remove the armor from the inner thigh, the lower segment, this comes off easily. Remove the rear thruster cover on the back of the leg, and finally these two pieces off the front of the knee. The next step then is to do this to the other unicorn's leg and to both legs of the banshee. Attaching the banshee parts onto the unicorn's leg is even simpler than taking the original parts off. Once again, just put everything on exactly the same way that you took them off, just now you're using the banshee parts. Simple as that right there, and that's what it should look like once complete. So you may have noticed while I was doing this or while you were doing it yourself that what I said earlier on is not entirely true. So you're not just removing the light grey parts on this kit, you're actually removing some more as well. So I will throw a link down there in the description so you can check out the full image of what the completed build should look like if you want to get through it a little bit quicker than following the full tutorial. But for the most part you are removing the light grey parts and replacing them with banshee parts, there's just some white parts that come off too. So out of this so far, when it comes to the disassembly, the side skirts were definitely the most difficult. These are very attached on by two pegs, so that does mean these are at high risk of breaking. I did break off one of the pegs on mine, but it will still hold down with one peg, but just take a lot of care here. This doesn't really matter if you're building this kit from the ground up, but if you are disassembling, be wary. With these, it's the navy blue on top, white down below. Also, I will mention if you don't want to chance these parts, chance breaking them, there's actually no need to change them out at all because in the actual show, it just has plain all white side skirts, so you don't really need to do it. Next up then we swap out the upper part of the crotch section right here, that's just simple, pull it forward, it comes off easily, replace it with that banshee segment, even though you cannot see it in the guide online, we're going to remove these back segments because these have been changed to blue in the show, and once again these are parts that attach on extremely simply. So the next section here, and it can be a little bit confusing too, is the shoulder. So what we remove is the lower segment of armor on both sides. This section here, which is towards the inner section of the top. You can actually remove this without removing the other upper section just by lifting it up and kind of wiggling it out because the top part is incredibly hard to remove. Next up, we're going to take out those rotating panels by removing the armor around the vent. Then we just do it all in reverse once again, and this is what we end up with. Next up in here is the arm. By the way, it is difficult to remove the arm from the torso. You're best off leaving it on if you aren't doing a fresh build. And what we remove is this little cap here, this entire segment here with the beam saber, and this inner segment right here. Grab all the exact same parts from the Banshee. Keep it in mind too, pop this part in as quickly as possible because this is part of the transformation gimmick and it could come apart on you. Then just popping everything back onto unicorn from the banshee as simple as that so if you are coming the route of disassembly like i am the torso is definitely the most difficult section so i'm going to go through this a little bit slower you're going to want to turn your unicorn's body around to the back like this and then get in just behind what would be like its shoulder blade there's a peg in there that you want to pop and that whole segment should come out now you can reach into the shoulder vulcan section up there try to pull this off as close to the peg as possible not to strain and break that and you should be able to kind of wiggle it back and forth until it pops off 
Next up, remove the plate on the back of the unicorn. This will give the arm more backward movement so you can extend the shoulder all the way back so the chest pops out like so. Now you can reach in behind this section right here and pop that segment and that will remove this chest part so you can get into that little flap section underneath. Once again, this will be so much easier to do from the ground up, but if you're not working from the ground up, this isn't the worst disassembly ever. I will also mention that this section here, this gray section of the chest, is one of the reasons you can't do this 100% perfectly without the full kit. And the reason is, you're meant to replace that with the exact same unicorn part in the Banshee color, which is a leftover on the Banshee's runners. It's a leftover part that usually would end up either kept in your spare parts or thrown into the bin. Mine went into the latter. The last bit you're going to need to remove is this little section right below the cockpit. So once again, it's just time to do everything in reverse just with Banshee parts. So that's the waist armor, the armor flaps in under the psycho frame, stick that psycho frame back on, reattach in those shoulder Vulcans, reattach on the side of the torso armor and the back. And then that is it for the torso, moving on to the head. So the head is a little bit more involved and like I mentioned earlier on, if you have built your kits like I have here and don't have the runners anymore, then you won't be able to do this 100% accurately, but you can do it close enough. What you need to do here is remove both sides of the head and the armor on the head camera. You may also want to remove the V-fin as well if you want to do what I'm about to do, which is color it. Bandai's tutorial says to use one of the Gundam Marker EX Shining Silvers. Now I do not have one of these, but I just have a standard Gundam Marker Silver, so I'm going to use that for this particular video. Just in case you do not know what a Gundam Marker is, it's a pump action paint marker that you can paint directly onto your model kits for. These are designed for Gundams, they will not damage your plastic, and they dry insanely quickly. These are very, very good if you use them right. If you don't like using the applicator of the pen itself, you can just pump them out into a tray or something similar and use a brush. But I will mention they do dry very, very quickly. This is what it looks like and it turned out pretty good. Like I mentioned though, because I do not have the leftover parts of the Banshee runners, all I did was remove the gold sections, these gold horns, from the Banshee's head and this is the part that I'm going to use. Sure, you can see some psycho frame, but it's not all that bad. Then just reassemble it all back up like so. As for the backpack, it doesn't say anything in this little tutorial, but I did notice in the actual series, in the first episode of Gundam Build The Real, the backpack looked very dark, which I assume is the Banshee's backpack. Also in the tutorial, when you see the version of this Gundam, which is made from the leftover parts, it is wearing the normal unicorn's backpack. So I assume you swap the backpacks between the two, and if you are going to do this, you will have to change the psycho plate out from within each of both of them. AKA the green psycho frame from this one we're building right now. And now that we've got everything built, it's time to snap it together. Last thing we need to do in here is the shield. So we need to replace the fin sections on the inside with the ones from the Banshee. If you're using the Banshee Norn, you're gonna to have to swap out the psycho plate to be the green one, and you can just slip it in as easy as this. You don't actually have to disassemble the whole thing, or you can if you want to. And now it is complete. So on the whole, it is not the hardest thing to do. I will mention once again, if you do have these kits built already, you can combine them, but you will be missing two parts, one on the chest, one on the head. If you've bought both kits, you still have them fresh, then you can just build them up like so. Just follow the same steps. You just don't have to do any of the disassembly. This, once again, I have to mention, is such a cool concept. I don't know if they'll ever do this again in future episodes of Gundam Build Real. I would like to see more, but this was always a concept waiting to happen with something like the Unicorn. The Banshee and the Unicorn are pretty much identical, so swapping parts is very, very simple. I would also love to see more kit bashes in the show in future. It may happen, it may not, but only time will tell. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews. And I'll see you next time. As always, I cannot end this video right here without thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video, for dropping a like, subscribing, and of course to each and every one of you that supports me over on the channel memberships or over on Patreon like Craig Jerry, Tyler Sanders, the ambassador for Asymmetric Cats, Caleb Engelhart, 
Shanti, and Brian Perez.